All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mr. Azek. I'll be your teacher for today. Uh, this is my very first screencast fed video, essentially my entire life. So uh, forgive me if there is a bit of a rough going at first. I'm also not staring at people. I'm just staring into my computer screen, which is never a fun way to present anything. Uh, so this is going to be our quick introductory video. I'm gonna talk about where we're going for the next week or so. Uh, and then the videos that come after this are gonna introduce a whole bunch of different ways of close reading Shakespeare passages. So here's where we are basically basically as a class at this point. Most of you have experienced the entirety of the Macbeth play and that you know basically what it is about. So there is a dude, his name is Macbeth. Uh, he becomes very ambitious, he becomes very power hungry and cray, and he kills a whole lot of people and it's very sad at the end. Um, at this point in the play, we can actually take a look at individual passages of Shakespeare. So if someone throws you a passage of Shakespeare that's maybe 20, 25 lines, and you have no idea what the heck to make of it because it looks like gibberish, what do you do? Uh, at this point, you have a couple options. You can just ball up the passage and throw it in the trash. That is one. I wouldn't recommend that. Um, or as I'm gonna introduce in a second, there's a number of different things that you can start to look for in the passages to start to put it together. So one, thing that you might either like or hate about analyzing Shakespeare passages is it's a bit like a treasure hunt in that there's always different literary things that you can look for that can help you sort of decode at first. And you'll immediately begin to see that Shakespeare is doing a heck of a lot of different things in every single line. Um, so in our coming videos for today and tomorrow, we are going to talk about something called a full stop, something called a mid stop, and I think we're gonna cut it there. And then in future videos, we're gonna start talking about a few other things. So the passage that we're gonna be talking about today is the passage when Macbeth uh, informs his wife that the King Duncan is spending the night at their house. Some of you may remember, Macbeth gets the prophecies, he tells his wife, and his wife gets uh, very, very excited. And when I say very, very excited, I mean, she's very excited about the prospect of murdering the king um, in cold blood. So this is a pretty pivotal, important scene. And I'm going to talk about a few different things that Shakespeare is doing as he is writing um, out this passage. Uh, but first, I want to give you some quick background information. So back when Shakespeare was writing plays, which was literally 400, 450 years ago in the 1600s, um, acting companies had very, very little time to rehearse their plays. Uh, nowadays, as you know, there are actors who take weeks and months even to put on their presentations. Uh, right? If you're acting in a school play or something, you often have a dozen um, rehearsals. But back then, and this was just a business model, in order to have enough money to stay in business, acting companies had to put on a new production every few days. So literally on Monday, they would perform Macbeth. On Thursday, they would perform Hamlet. And what this meant is they had just one or two rehearsals at most before a performance, which is, for those of you who have done acting, very, very few rehearsals. So Shakespeare was working within this system, and he knew that the actors would not have a ton of time to spend agonizing over how to interpret his lines, which is kind of ironic because now high schoolers are forced to spend um, many hours agonizing over how to interpret these lines. Even the actors who are originally supposed to interpret these lines only had like a day or two. So Shakespeare was like, okay, here's my system. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to include as many clues as possible within the text itself to show my actors how to perform these lines. So the first big one that I'm going to talk about is called a full stop. Um, that will be in the next video, as well as what's called a mid stop. These are uh, totally basic and very essential to understanding what the heck Shakespeare is doing when he sits down to write. Um, so uh, tune in next time. Um, Hasta la vista.